What is going on guys, it is Blurry here back with another video and today I have a subscriber story. I have not one, but maybe two, or maybe three, <laughs> more than one. Um, but there's a few short ones in there so I decided today I'll at least tackle two shorter stories. They're still like six, seven minutes long so they're still pretty cool experiences guys. So I hope you guys do enjoy this video. If you do, be sure to leave a like and a comment. Help me out in that algorithm guys. Hit that bell if you guys have not already. And also click subscribe if you haven't already. And shout out to the channel members. J Mac, Pepe Harambe and Jonathan Swartz. They are the OGs of the channel. They keep me posting videos. If you guys want to keep me posting videos. And keep me posting them more regularly. <laughs> than what I should be doing as I am now. Then be sure to become a channel member. <laughs> anyway guys let's get into one of these stories. Okay guys, so for the first story, we have a story that is on LSD and DXM at the exact same time, and it is sent in by a guy named Roasty Co. So thank you Roasty Co for sending this in. It's really doing me a solid here, bro. Hey Blurry, I love the stuff you do, man. This is a story of me and my buddies taking mushrooms and getting really, really fucked up. Names have been changed for privacy, obviously. My dealer sold me 12 grams of some high quality golden teachers. Now I'm not a newbie to mushrooms, this was my fifth mushroom trip. But what made this one different was that I put in the effort to make the mushrooms more edible. I know that some people don't mind the taste of mushrooms, but they taste just like metal and dirt to me. So I made a high quality mushroom chocolate. Each square was 0.5 grams. I take dosing super seriously, so I made sure it was accurate. When my friends Les Sassy and Quinnen, Alvin and Johnson showed up, we divided up the bar of chocolate. Sassy only dropped 1.5. <laughs> Sassy, Sassy the Sas Sasquatch, guys. I, I can't help figuring out that. Sh Sassy only dropped 1.5 grams, so about three squares. Quinnen... Alvin and Johnson didn't want any, so that left 10.5 grams to sl split between me and Les. So we each took half of what was left. The first thing I noticed was the most intense come up anxiety I've ever felt in my life besides my insides when doing kickflips. If you guys don't know what he means there, it means when you do a kickflip on a, on a skateboard it hits your heel. Um, we had plans to hotbox a tent in the backyard, but I couldn't get up to do set it up, so Quinnen and Alvin went and did it for me. I remember feeling like a burden, but being glad I had such good friends. While they were outside setting up the tent, the visual started. The ceiling of my apartment was shifting and morphing, the bricks that made up my wall were flowing into one another, and the video game that Johnson was playing looked like a live action movie after what felt like an eternity but was actually only 20 minutes. Quinnen and Alvin came and got us to go into the backyard and hotbox the tent. Now if you've never smoked weed and tripped, don't. Weed is extremely potent when you're tripping. So me and my friends were outside having an amazing time listening to some grateful dead and smoking some fire joints that I rolled. Yes, for some reason when I'm tripping out, I'm fucking amazing at rolling. So me and my friends that are out tripping in a tent when Sassy's brother, Sassy's brother here to refer to as TK came outside and yelled, Sassy, 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 come inside right now, it's an emergency. Now think about the headspace me and Les were in. We had dropped 5.25 grams each about 40 minutes ago, so we were about to enter the peak when TK comes out and freaks us all out, shouting that there is an emergency. Now a sane person would just come down to the tent full of crazy people and calmly ask if Sassy could come inside, especially because it wasn't an emergency. I later found out that TK was just having an argument with his girlfriend and in the heat of the argument she had a panic attack and locked herself in his room. Serious? Yes. Emergency? No. <laughs> okay, yeah, I guess so. Instantly the energy changed. Sassy had her 90 year old grandmother over so we assumed that something serious happened to her and that somebody needed to go to the hospital or died. 
I started hyperventilating as the panic set in. Everything started to become so overwhelming that the only functions I had left was my breathing and moaning from the pain and nausea. My friends got me back inside safe and I laid face down on the couch, rifing. From my perspective, I didn't even remember going back inside. I just remember the paranoid delusions. I heard people screaming and crying. I heard police pulling up to my house. I heard movements upstairs that sounded like a fight was breaking out. I heard gunshots and shouting. The visual shifted from bright colors and moving textures to demons and murderers. I thought I was ex- was in extreme danger. My sober friend Johnson, who was the trip setter, told me I was asking if everyone was okay over and over. I was stuck in a terrifying thought loop while peeking out on the highest dose of mushrooms I had ever taken. Eventually, Sassy came back downstairs and explained the situation to everyone, and everyone except me started having a good time again. It took everyone hugging me at the same time for me to eventually calm down and enjoy my peak. Now my sense of time was completely fucked, so it felt like days or years to me, but it had only been 15 minutes since I had gone back inside. Whoa, <laughs> that's... Uh, that's a long time that's such a, a small amount of time to be thinking it's like a year's worth which um and they I'd gone back inside which means it was only about an hour or so since I had dropped to distract myself from the remaining anxiety I played some Tony Hawk downhill jam which while tripping is easy enough to still have fun As I was playing, my surroundings started to melt away and my reality shifted to one that I can only describe as low poly or low resolution. Everything was drastically simplified like my world was a PS2 game. After we got done with Downhill Jam, Les asked if I wanted to smoke some more weed. I told him yes. Big mistake. We went outside and that's when Quinn asked me if I happened to have any salvia, which I did. She asked if she could try it as she had never done it. So I went and got my salvia. So there were so there we were passing around a bong full of weed and we were hitting it over and over and they completely boosted my op- open eye visuals and closed eye visuals to the point that I felt myself starting to enter an ego death. Then right after that we all did a couple of hits of salvia. Salvia and traditional psychedelics have a synergistic effect. So I was blasted right into ego death. I felt myself die and leave my body behind and I was plopped into what looked like a court of sorts where I was judged for my actions. The judges told me that I was a good person but searching for the answers that I wanted by taking drugs was going to ruin my life. That scared the shit out of me. I was then blasted back into my body and woke back up. I then told everyone that I was ready to go to bed. I didn't know it, but I was in ego death for about two hours, running on autopilot. I somehow got myself back inside on the couch and fell asleep. Then TK came downstairs into my apartment without asking and asked if he could hang out. And I told him no. He freaked out and called us immature and told us that we were excluding him on purpose which made me feel terrible, so I sent everyone home and sat in bed crying until I came down and fell asleep. I vowed to never trip in that apartment again because I simply didn't feel the same there anymore. And yes, this trip did give me PTSD, and I still see light traces in my vision to this day. Moral of the story, do not do drugs, kids. Well, there you go, guys. That That's a pretty, pretty solid story there, I guess you would say. Um, it's, you know, a few different drugs in, in that one. What did we have? We had, we had salvia. Um, we had uh, psilocybin, cannabis, and salvia. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. So, yeah. We had all three of those substances in one. That was pretty cool. He didn't really go too in-depth with the salvia, but he said it blasted him off into an ego death, so that's pretty cool. Um, and it sounds like he makes some mad edibles, too, because I'd, I'd love to eat some mushroom uh, chocolate fucking bar edibles, because I don't like the taste of mushrooms, either. I think it, it's terrible. 
Alright guys, so the next one is going to be a story sent in by a guy named Gmobile69 and it is on psilocybin, so enjoy guys. And this one is sent in by a guy named Gmobile69, so thank you Mobile for sending this one in and uh, I apologize guys, you, you may be able to tell from uh, my voice. Um, I'm super phlegmy, I'm super sick, that's why I haven't really uploaded. I've been really, really sick and pretty sick still right now recording this, so hopefully I can make it through the whole process of just, um, you know, reading out this this thing, right? And uh, so I picked a short story just because I'm sick and I feel bad, I really need to get a video out to you guys. Um, but once I'm feeling 100% better, there'll be... A bunch of longer ones out like 20 30 40 minute ones so look forward to that guys leave a like if you guys do enjoy this one uh, also leave a comment as well and as always shout out to the channel members J Mac Pepe Harambe and Jonathan Swartz now without further ado let's get into this um, sorry now I've actually lost it guys <laughs> Hey Blurry, thanks for taking the time to read this. My YouTube name is Gmobile69. I will not be giving the people in this story names to protect their privacy. This was in late October 2020, and I had bought 4 grams of shrooms about a week before the trip. I was nervous to do them again because this was only the third time I had ever done any psychedelics. I was very inexperienced with drugs and in general, and had only smoked weed once before this. It was a Friday, and the plan was to go to a family friend's house and hang with them. At the time, I didn't really think of 4 grams as a high dosage, so I, I ate all of them before I left. They started to kick in about 10 minutes later, and I was already feeling overwhelmed. The family friend's mum had me help with Halloween decorations, and the whole time I was extremely nervous that I was going to get caught. After we put up the decorations, we went inside and started to play Dungeons and Dragons, but realized we didn't have all the things we needed for the campaign, so I went upstairs to text a friend. This is when I started getting visuals. Everything was becoming kind of blurry. Haha, <laughs> blurry. No pun intended, right guys? And sort of wavy. I then went out into the hall and had suddenly been convinced that everyone was not really the people I knew and that I was in a mushroom dimension. My friend went into the bathroom and because I thought there were no consequences in this dimension, I pissed on the bathroom door. The friend came out and asked if I had peed on the door, but I didn't know what to say so I just stood there confused. I've no idea how this didn't tip them off to me being high immediately, but I guess they gave me the benefit of the doubt. I then went downstairs to hang out, but I was being super awkward. I tried to participate in conversation, but I was so afraid that they would realize I was high that I barely said anything. We grabbed dinner and went upstairs to play Smash Bros. This was when Steve had just been released, so we were all excited. I tried to say things while I was playing the game, but it all came out as terribly awkward. We then went outside to sit by a fire pit their dad had made and played a round of Among Us, and the whole time I was just asking people to repeat themselves and making really dumb comments on things. There were torches behind us, and I just start st stared at the flames on them for about five minutes. I did this about three more times. The fire pit was made of brick, and I kept just pushing on one of them. Someone told me to stop, but I just kept doing it. About two more times, I repeatedly kept doing it, and I would keep sticking my foot into the fire pit until it got around about eight times. I got up to go inside and this is when things really started to turn bad and people noticed that something was really off about me. I went inside to go get a water and when I went to go back out I noticed their dog. 
I still thought I was in the mushroom dimension or whatever, so I pushed the dog onto the floor. I still feel really bad about this and sorry for the dog. My dad came in and the friend's dad and they tried to stop me. They took me outside and moved everyone inside. Then they gave me a talk about what I was on and stuff, but I wasn't really paying attention. There was a water bottle sitting next to me, and because I thought there were no consequences, I started to pour it on my leg. About two minutes later, I started to feel really cold and wet inside while I was still being lectured. At this time, I had realized that I was a psychedelic god and had an epiphany that I could probably walk up air like it was stairs. And I didn't actually try to do this, but it fed into my belief that I was a psychedelic god. The friend's mum tried to comfort me by putting a blanket over me and stroking my hair. They thought about taking me to the hospital because my lips were so blue. This was probably because of the water I poured on my leg, but they thought it was because of the mushrooms. Everyone came into the living room where I was laying down and it was and it really started to overwhelm me. I realized that if I was a god, I would live forever, and this sent me into a panic attack where I just kept saying, I get mushrooms, I get it, hoping that they would stop for me, hoping the trip would stop. One of my friends tucked her head into her shirt, and the other put on a rubber mask. This sent me even deeper into the bad trip, and made me freak out even more. Later they said they were trying to make me have a bad trip. Everyone looked like they changed location. Wait, what? I'm, I'm stopping the story for a second. Later they said they were trying to make me have a bad trip. Why in the world are your friends trying to make you have a bad trip? <clears throat> that is just bad. I don't know. what. Uh, did you ask them to do that? I don't know. That just does not seem like good. You should probably tell them not to do that. Alright, sorry guys, continuing on, continuing on. Everyone looked like they changed location every time I blinked. Their dad then started to come up to me and started talking about 7 times 4 equals 28, and I was so confused. They all left for a little bit and I really started to notice auditory hallucinations. It sounded like radio static and heart rate monitors in a hospital. I think I fell asleep in the blanket around five times later and woke up to the TV playing Halloween. I was starting to come down now, but my belief that I was in a different dimension was so strong that it bled into reality. My dad sat next to me and gave me some water. I thought he was a psychedelic being trying to guide me through this ex experience and told me to take off the clothes that were wet. This comes into play later. He started to talk with the friend's dad and told me to listen to what the TV was saying. The TV looked like all the people were wearing the same mask that my friend was wearing. I went to the bathroom to pee and I took my underwear off because they were wet too. And then I walked out naked and tried to touch the dog. Because they had said not to. I thought this was reverse psychology from the beings and it was the only way to exit the trip. I went back under the blanket and watched stuff with them for a while. I got another lecture, but this time I listened because it wasn't from the psychedelic drugs. By this point, the trip was basically over and I went home. The next day, I got grounded for a month. Well, there you go. <laughs> and that was a bit confusing. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, this this is this guy's just, just taking like mushrooms, like and trying to act like sober in front of his um, family and shit like that. I guess I don't know how many, I don't know where he was or like what event he was at, like a family gathering. Was it a Halloween gathering? Is that what he said? Because um, sounds like there's a bunch of different random people in here and shit. And yeah, the part about the your friends trying to make you have a bad trip, that part is just to me like. Wow, like that's crazy. Like, why would you, like, why would you do something like that? That's just, that's just insane. 
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed both of those stories. That is going to be it for today. And I will apologize once again. I'm not sure if I did at the start of the video, but the reason I haven't uploaded it in like a week is because I've been extremely sick. Um, been really, really sick indeed with a cough. Even, um, even literally got some prescription lean. Um, you Americans would be jealous. Got some prescription codeine syrup to help with my cough. Um, which is piss cheap here, and <laughs> it would just retail for like thousands over in the states for you guys. But, um, yeah, I've just been sick, guys. I'm sorry about that, but I'm getting a bit better, so I'll keep on the grind, I'll keep uploading. I feel really bad when I miss like days like this because it makes me feel so, uh, you know, it makes me feel like unloyal to you guys, like I'm not, like I'm not appreciative of of having like every, everything I've gotten from this channel, which I am so. And yeah, I hope you guys do know that. But anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's been me, Blurry. Show me around with your mum, your grandma, your dog, your uncle, your brother, and your sister. And leave a like and comment. And I'll see you later. Peace out, guys. Love you all.